So I thought I would take you through somewhat of a historical um, photo session here of, of the foundation. Um, I joined, believe it or not, in July of 1997. And I'll say to Dr. Holden, who forgets more about prostate cancer before I wake up than I will ever know before I wake up in the morning, thank you for your leadership all these years, Skip. You're a great guy. And I'd also like to say to Jonathan Simons, whose leadership has taken a great organization to an amazing organization. And Charles and I talked about this since I actually have more man years now with you than Charles, Charles did, even though you knew him all the way back as an undergraduate student. Um, I, I dare anybody to spend a week or even a day with Jonathan. You will not find anybody that works more tirelessly. He's infatigable. And um, his, his intellect keeps this foundation going at a strong and rapid pace. So your leadership is really appreciated. Thank you. So we started out in 1993 with the, the, the funky, we called it the butt man, right, Skip? I think that was the, the logo from the, uh, the Olympics in Los Angeles. Cap Cure, and Mike tells the story about cancer of the prostate and cure and how it spun out all these new organizations. But in 2004, we became the Prostate Cancer Foundation. And this year, in no small part to the generosity of, of Shmuel Maitar, uh, we became truly global, um, all the way to China, where I've been twice this year so far. And we'll have more to say about our activities in China in just a moment. If you think back to 1993, what was going on? You know, Bush, Bush went to Russia, Bill Clinton was man of the year, Sam Broder was the head of the National Cancer Institute, and Mrs. Doubtfire was a, was a favorite movie of the time. And Mike tells the story of when he first visited with Dr. Holden as a patient in 1993, that he had been to an internist, they missed the cancer, he had had a physical exam. The only abnormality was this you know, PSA test, which Mike had to beg to get. And, um, and he got it, and the rest is history now. That was just the beginning of his greatness. There were nine original foundation criteria. I'm not going to go through these, but any of you that know our culture, you know that all of these attributes are deep in our DNA, and we think about it all the time and try to perform at the highest level always. There's been so much that's gone on in now nearly 20 years of progress. I mean, just, just the pipeline alone of new drugs being approved. I mean, when I, when I came on the scene, you know, Logothetis and Pienta and Cher and Petrolac, everyone was sort of reaching for whatever they could find in chemotherapy to throw at patients. And, you know, all of that work became the clinical foundation of what now is a robust pipeline of life prolonging therapies. But the number of publications is, is, is remarkable. And, and just the number of nations with research centers now, 18 nations we count with major academic medical centers moving the ball forward. It's quite extraordinary. So in 1993, and I, I have to look at this a little carefully, um, you can see uh, Andy von Eschenbach. It's, it's interesting. Some people, some people age, some people don't. I think Skip Holden looks just the same as he did in 1993. Um, but my hair was also not gray when I started in 97, so I know that feeling. And you can see uh, Neil Bander and Paul Lang, just interesting people from, uh, from our past and present. Um, they had a strategy meeting, actually, after that first issuing of the, of the awards in 1993. And I think Mike's quote is just brilliant. You do the science, and I'll get the money. And uh, Skip, I think you'll agree he's held, held fast to that motto and just has done a marvelous job over the years generating resources. We also generated a lot of awareness. Um, you know, Andy Grove on the cover of Fortune magazine, um, you know, Norman Schwarzkopf on the cover of Time magazine. All of a sudden in the, in the 1990s, prostate cancer became a disease that men could actually talk about, and they certainly did. And the events, oh, you just, you know, we, 
it's, I think it's Jan Haber, uh, one of our, our, our head of events that said, you just can't make this stuff up. If any of you have been to the New York dinner, and what, if you'll re recall from the video, the eagle flying across the grand ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria, what, it, what you couldn't see was standing right next to the guy that caught the eagle was Simon, Sewell, and Holden. And the last words to come out of the, the eagle trainer's hands uh, mouth before they let the eagle fly was, don't raise your hand. <laughs> but you can see Sting and Paul Simon and Donald Trump and Lionel Richie and Kevin Costner. It's just, just awesome, the people that have come out for us. So I, I'm not sure, couldn't quite figure out, Skip, what year this was from, but I think it was 1996. This was the, the first incarnation of the so-called therapy consortium, and you can see the clinicians here with Skip on the, uh, the very left and, and Jonathan Simons, and I see Chris and Phil Kantoff, George Wilding, Howard Scher when he was a little, he's not here anymore, so I can say he wasn't gray and he was a lot more pudgy before he started running marathons. That was a great group. Andy has been with us since the beginning. Um, Skip brought Mike to a conference in, in Houston. Um, Andy von Eschenbach is now on the board of directors of PCF and is just, just a shining light uh, for all of us. Uh, Neil, I could not, I would be remiss if I didn't include Neil Rosen in our, our compendium. But, you know, Neil, Neil has been a sort of a, ment a scientific mentor to many of us, including myself. He has a way of, you know, in our history, Neil has a way of telling you when you're right, and even a more interesting way of telling you when he doesn't think you're right. These are some great pictures. You see Neil Bander on the left. Um, this would have been 1993, 1994. And look at Dr. Pienta. Amazing. George, George Wilding looks the same as he, today as he did then. Bill Nelson has not changed a bit. There's Chris and, and Leland Chung. And you see Dr. Simons with his slide of uh, the, early, the early vestiges of GVAX on the, stay, on the screen behind him. My guess is that was probably a 35 millimeter slide. The, the drugs that have come along and the people and the projects are so rich. You know, if you think about all of the work led by so many medical oncologists, would, no one ever believed that prostate cancer was even chemosensitive and all the studies that you did, Ken, and, and Howard Scher, and Chris, and Dan Petrolak, and Mario, and Michael Carducci, and all of you, you know, landed us with docetaxel, the first life-prolonging drug in how many, forever, basically. It was the first, and it was a foundation. Matthew Smith, who was introduced to me by Phil Kantoff years ago, that, that said, you know, I really think there are adverse effects of Lupron therapy. I want to study it, I want to measure it, and I'm going to make survivorship my, you know, my, my career. And, you know, thank you, Matthew, you gave us Zomeda, you gave us Exgeva, and his studies now from about 97 on through the current are now looking at survivorship of the new ultra testosterone lowering drugs like abiraterone. And once again, Charles, we can't, just can't say en enough, you know, your intellect, being in this field is just a blessing to, to all patients. And the rapid, the rapid approval of enzalutamide was due to two, two reasons. Number one, it was a really well-designed clinical program, but probably more importantly, the science that that clinical program sat on led nobody to believe otherwise that this was real. And, and it just it went really, really fast. I think it's a new record, isn't it? For three, you know, three months before the PDUFA date. And then finally, um, and neither of them are here, sorry to say, Howard and Johan have just done a great job at the phase three level of organizing companies and organizing investigators everywhere. And I, I have those two Kaplan-Meier curves up there. It's amazing when I actually, for the first time, looked at them side by side 
for enzalutamide and for, for um, Zytiga, how absolutely similar they look. And emptying the gas tank. I mean, when, when Ari Beldergren first called, called me about licensing what is now Zytiga, he said, oh, I, I wanted to tell you about this new company I started named Cougar. And I have this drug from the Mars and it's been kind of sitting on the shelf. It's a, like a second generation ketoconazole. And um, it was the intelligence of these people that showed us, that really rediscovered the notion of intracrine androgens and made this drug extremely valuable. The rest is history. Patients are benefiting from it now. And then finally, our young investigators. And you know, that left picture there before a boat ride. How many of you were on our boat ride by show of hands? That's another one of those things. You had to be there to believe it. That was one of the most beautiful days that you could imagine. And we'll miss Tahoe, but we're moving on to, to larger things. And then when we went to Washington, D.C. Uh, two years ago, we, we put people into jerseys, broke them up in teams, and let them compete. You young investigators are really the, the, the centromere of our cell. And our global efforts, you see the five, five young investigators from Canada, some are here. I see Amina out there. Um, Tarek is here. I see the, our two people from, from Ireland. Um, Greece is represented. Uh, the UK is represented. Um, Australia is represented. And China. China is so interesting. We went to China and just had the most amazing trip. The first trip that uh, Shmuel Matar went on with us, who helped us organize it, and Quinn Zhao, our, our person that I will never go to China without Quinn. Um, in, in five days, I think we visited, what, like nine different hospitals. We met the leaders of the of the Chinese Urologic Association. We went to amazing places, met amazing people, named two young investigators, and actually had a ceremony in Beijing to, to honor them and their mentors and, and, their, and their colleagues. So the presence is, is all, about, all about being global. We've had some great leaders, too. Um, Alan Flans, who was the first CEO of of PCF, unfortunately passed away tragically a few days ago. Rick Atkins, I don't know, Rick, if you're still here. Rick was here earlier today. Uh, Rick was on board when I, when I joined. Patrick McDonough, and most recently before Jonathan joined, uh, Leslie Michelson. It's been interesting leadership. And then finally, our team. You know, I think some people think PCF is this huge organization in the skyscraper in Santa Monica. But truth be told, we're, we're a very modest group. Um, you can see most of us in that picture, which we took last week, so it's very current. We have people that raise money, and I think Gary Dikovitsky is here. Gary, if you're, if you're in the room, stand up for us, because we owe you a lot for raising money. Thank you, Gary. And Dan, Dan Zanka, I don't know, Dan was, was running a little late from another event. Dan, Dan, stand up. Dan communicates. And Dan also writes a brilliant blog called My New York Minute. And good. I, you know, Dan, and I, I hope I'm not stealing your words, but since you tell the world about it, I'm, I'll tell our world about it. Those of you that don't know, Dan, has had has prostate cancer, has been treated for a very aggressive disease, and is is all of our heroes. And my New York Minute is just a great blog. And if you want to bring what you do, if you're a laboratory scientist and don't see patients, and you want to get a real feeling for what it's like to have cancer, you should read Dan's blog. It's truly amazing. Uh, we have my my science colleague Gunit is here. Gunit, why don't you stand up and say hello? Gunit's my partner in the 75 or 80 journal clubs that we did telephonically last year, and uh, we, we appreciate your, your input to that. And that's who we are and where we've been. Now, we've, we still have a lot of work left to do. Um, men are still dying of prostate cancer. 
Um, the new drugs are wonderful, but as, as uh, Charles Sawyers mentioned, um, nearly everybody will eventually become resistant to them. So we really have to, to, to redouble our efforts in, in a lot of the things that we do. We're constantly thinking about doing things differently. Um, Jonathan and Skip and I are, kind of, we're, we're reorganizing the, the scientific strategy at PCF. I think the quantum leap RFA is like a small first step in that area, but there are some radical changes coming that you should all keep your eyes and ears out for. And I thank you all for your attendance. Uh, we'll see you around this weekend, and we'll see most of you in Carlsbad. Thank you.